Hello everyone, my name is FPS Chess and welcome back to my tutorial series for the Oliver Hazard Perry. Today we'll be going over Aztec and we might go over Son of Booze as well, but we'll see how that goes. So Aztec here, this is your uh, helicopter control here basically, what is it officially called? Are you going to tell me what it's officially called? I don't know what Aztec stands for off the top of my head, it'll probably be annotated, but yeah, this is where you control your helicopter. And this is also where you can... Uh, deploy own ship sono buoys but uh, it's mostly for the helicopter here so let's go ahead and get a helo ready for launch I got quick launch on right now so it'll only take not too long it won't take very long to do it all on quick launch it'll go very quickly but I'm gonna speed up time here just to expedite the process so when you go to your helo menu here uh, you can change the different loadouts here got anti-submarine warfare anti-surface warfare or strike and strike is against like land targets, so hellfire missiles. Um, mostly just going to be using anti-surface warfare here. Sometimes you might have an anti or anti-submarine warfare rather. You might have an anti-surface warfare mission every now and then. You might have to deal with like a missile boat or something. So bringing along a penguin ASM here might not be a bad idea. But uh, what you got to do is basically bring this down from the different alert levels so you can launch it. And uh, different alert levels are, I think, thirty just means it's like ready in the hangar or something. 15 means it's out on the deck, and then 5 means the engines are spinning and it's ready to launch. Now if you if you turn off weapon, if you turn off a uh, aircraft quick launch here, um, it'll take an hour to get all the way down to uh, to be able to launch. So it'll, I think it'll take about uh, about 30 minutes, from, yeah, it, it's about translated to minutes, I think it takes about 30 minutes, 15 minutes, and 5 minutes. Uh, one of these is probably a little longer and then it takes probably another 5 minutes to launch, but the whole cycle on without aircraft quick launch takes uh, an hour to do so uh, sometimes you know you might just want to have it on aircraft quick launch I don't know um, sometimes you can have two he two helos loaded out it's usually just one so uh, we have it on alert status 5 but we can't launch them because we don't have a green deck here so let's set a green deck and uh, let's check to make sure he's in the wind envelope here he is in the wind envelope so we can go ahead and launch our helo alright I can take it off at full speed there or uh, sped up anyway, so now our helo is aloft. Alright, so now we can go back to the main screen here for Aztec. And uh, we've got a lot of weapon, uh, a lot of options here that aren't loaded up right now. So let's go ahead and click on our helo, and that will reveal a lot of these options. So the helo can either go off and do its own thing with the uh, helo control set to helo, or you can set it to ship, and then we can control the helo. Uh, while that changes over to ship, you have two link modes here, acoustic and radar. Um, you can use your helo as like a, almost like an E2, E2 Hawkeye, like a, a radar post out there if you want to, but for, in order to do that you have to use the link mode of radar, but we'll get to that when we get to uh, the weapons coordinator later on. But uh, right now acoustic is fine, and uh, when you have the helo under ship control, you can uh, give it some various commands here. You can give it a waypoint to fly to, and tell it to drop a sono buoy, one of many sono buoys. I'll get into all these sono buoys in the sono buoy tutorial which we might be doing today or you can tell it to drop a weapon I think the here let me uh, I want to check to see what the default is for this torpedo drop in um in here because I'm not sure what the default um, programming is for the torpedo when you do it from the Aztec menu here uh, one other quick thing to note I think when this is set to acoustic that means uh, that you get sono buoy data. So if it's such a radar, I think that means you might not be able to get sono buoy data from the helo, because um, you can only get sono buoy data if you have like line of sight to the the sono buoy, and you lose that after about 10 nautical miles or so. So if you send the helo like far out, he can send back some sono buoy data to you. So if you do make it radar, I think that's something you have to note. You might not be able to get um, sono buoy data relayed through the helicopter back to you. Alright, so just as I thought it was, it, uh, it defaults to a circle search torpedo when you do a torpedo drop here. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much it for this screen here. And then uh, what you can do is you can launch a buoy from the side of your ship here. So you can load up like a, a, decast, shall a decast deep here rather. Just launch that off, launch a buoy off the side of your ship. I don't tend to do that too much um, just because if he's that close to you anyway, you'd probably be able to hear him with the toad. So, uh, But if you're trying to cover a lot of ground and maybe like lay sonobu somewhere then I guess you could drop them off like that but I probably just do it with the helo instead uh, I don't think I have weapon quick reload on so this might take a little while to do here yeah it took about a minute or so it's not too bad but yeah then you gotta you got yourself a buoy out here launches right out the front 
And uh, yeah, I think that's it for the Aztec screen. So I think we might as well move on to the Sonobu screen here. So let's cancel that for the time being. Anything else here I want to really notice uh, or note? No. Okay, yeah, so that's that's pretty much it. For, that's all you got to know for Aztec, really. Uh, I guess we could shawl for covering a helo, but it's pretty simple. You just got to make sure you have a green deck. Oh, and big big point of note, make sure your Seawiz is not set to full auto. It will shoot your helo when it takes off or gets close to try and land. So make sure your Seawiz is not on full auto here. And uh, yeah, if, if you recover the helo, just make sure you know you got a, you got a green deck set. Otherwise, you won't be able to land. But uh, yeah, I think that's it for Aztec. Actually, let's move on to Sonobuoy now. So let's get our helo here to drop a Sonobuoy. So uh, let me just go over all these Sonobuoys real quickly. So you got shallow types and then deep types as well. DFAR, this is your pretty much your standard basic go-to Sonobuoy here. Um, it's an omnidirectional hydrophone. It's a passive only. So uh, there's two display modes for it. You can um, you can see frequency data or you can see bearing data. So it's like LA broadband versus LA narrowband. Um, you got two types, shallow and deep. I'm not too. I'm. I probably like in some point of this. Some point of the screen, I'll put like the specs up for each of these buoys, like how how deep each one goes and everything. So you got your DFARS. That's your pretty much your go-to buoy here. You got DCAS. It might be diecast, whatever. You know what I'm talking about. Uh, this one has a. This one can ping. So that's the advantage to using the diecast. There's you got a pinger on it. And then you got um, a Vlad Sono buoy here. This uh, works better in like rough sea states. So uh, that's the advantage to a Vlad Sono buoy. Um, they do go a lot deeper than DFAR, like a Vlad shallow goes a lot deeper than a DFAR shallow or a DCAS shallow. So even if you're launching a Vlad shallow, it could still potentially go underneath the layer because they go so deep, that's how they get away from you know the surface clutter if there's a lot of ambient noise. And then BT probe, this is a bathyotherm probe here. Okay, so according to the manual, the Vlad Sono buoys have the furthest passive detection range in the game. So you should, you should be searching with Vlad Sono buoys, and then narrowing down your search bubble with die fars. And then the die cast here has the least uh, passive range, so that's why you don't want to be searching with die cast. They don't have, they're not very good at the passive there. You want to use them for active. But even then, you know, they can only, they only have so much wattage, so they can't really um, detect people that far with a ping. So you're going to want to use the die cast when you've pretty much triangulated where it guys and you want to get a final solution, you know, you're talking like plus or minus, you know, a few hundred yards here. Um, uh, that's not the most most powerful active ping there, but yeah, so you want to go from Vlad to die far to die cast in terms of finding enemies here. So, uh, yeah, let's see. Okay, so we got this Sona buoy out here. So what do you do with that as you come to the F2 screen here? Aztec is F3, by the way. F2 is the Sona buoy screen. And uh, the parry can look at eight different channels at once here. Um, let's go around the, uh, the the screen here. So as you can see over here, we have different modes, air versus ship. Um, I th this means that this mode, you're, you're getting the signals from the helo. You're getting them transmitted from the helo. And over here, this means you're trying to get them from the ship. So it's just a, a difference in, um, in, in signal acquisition there. Maybe the, the helo is too far away. The helo can get too far away and beneath the horizon, and then you won't see any sono buoy data from the helo. That can happen, so you might have to switch over to ship mode. So uh, you're probably going to use air air mode for the most part, uh, unless your unless your helo is really close that you can use the sono buoy there, or use your own uh, shipboard sensor to get sono buoy data. Okay, now what we have down here, this is uh, these are frequency alerts. So. In default dangerous waters or stock dangerous waters rather if you're looking for a Russian submarine you might set this to you know 50 Hertz here and turn that on and as soon as one of these sonobuoys detects a frequency on 50 Hertz you'll hear this alert that's like frequency alert frequency alert frequency alert and I'll just like keep saying that until you like check it out so uh, yeah that's a pretty good thing to, to turn on there if you're looking for more specific submarines you can put in more spe specific frequency alerts so uh, yeah that's a cool feature to have so uh, yeah, each one of these screens can potentially be looking at a sono buoy, but the way I like to use sono buoys, is I pretty much have one sono buoy on two screens. I'll show that in a second here. So uh, this sono buoy might be ready to look at data from it. So let's go ahead and change this to channel two. It is ready. Okay. So on the nav map here, if you zoom in, uh, right now our helo's in the way. Let me get him to move. Yeah, get out of there, man. 
So as you can see right here, um, there's like a little subscript number on each sonobu that says which channel it is, what frequency it is. So that first sonobu we dropped is frequency one, so we could look at that if we wanted to. And then the second buoy here is on a uh, frequency two. It's not always going to be numbered that way. And in my experience in multiplayer, the numbering is not always consistent between all the players in a match. So just something worth noting. So uh, you got two different uh, screens here to look at info for the sonar buoys. This right here is the frequency. Uh, this is omni. So basically what that means is it's taking sound from every direction. It doesn't care where it's coming from. which is just going to spit out um, a frequency spectrum for you here. So... You might have five contacts, you'll see five different frequency spectrums. That's how this screen right here works. I'm not the biggest fan of it. It's kind of ambiguous, and you got to wait for the waterfall to fill it up a little bit to start noticing anything. So I like to click Mode here, and it switches it to Directional here. But it also has to keep Omni up at the same time. So this is how you lose two screens. But when you have it on Directional here, you got Bearing over here, and then um, you still have the Frequency Readout over here. This one just has a time on the vertical axis, but this one has bearing instead. So if I speed up my ship here, we'll be able to see me on here. Make turns for two and uh, we'll have some dots nine. showing up right, probably around this bearing around here. And you'll be able to see that. If just give it a few seconds, I should be showing up on this sonar buoy here. Anything? Nothing? No. All right, well, let's change it to channel one here. Should be able to see me. It's probably because the water's really shallow. Poor, poor sonar conditions here. So if we change this to one, you should be able to see my ship. I don't know why you can't right now. That's really interesting. <laughs> I guess it's just because the water is really shallow. I'm not sure. That's interesting. You should, well, this is a deep sonar buoy. I don't know. But you should be able to see me on this DFAR shallow. That's very interesting. It's probably just because the water is so shallow. Poor acoustical conditions. Uh, a, a parry at flank speed, you'd probably be able to pick it up from 10, maybe even 50 nautical miles away if you're talking blue water, you know, out here. But uh, I'm just right here in the Chesapeake Bay right now, home state of Maryland. Uh, yeah, you, you'd see some um, some blips here. So if it's a parry, you know, you'd see, if we're on this bearing, you'd see a blip here. You know, it's 60, and then 125, and then 320. So, uh, yeah. Uh, you just go in here and mark it, and if it's got a, enough da enough data for a classification, it'll try and classify it for you. But uh, as soon as you start getting channels, if you have this frequency alert enabled, it'll start going off there. You can also go to the library screen here and apply filters and stuff, but I'm fine with just looking at my frequency sheet. That's fine. It's good enough for me. Um, and like I said, you know, the difference between having a, a contact with 50 hertz as a, as a first frequency versus 60 hertz as a first frequency, you know, you can just kind of use it that way to be like, okay, this is who I'm looking for, this guy's probably Russian, or this is who I'm looking for, this guy's probably American. Except you're not going to be looking for Americans because there aren't Sono buoys in this game for Russians because there aren't any Russian platforms that use Sono buoys. So you're pretty much just going to be looking for Russians or Chinese with the Sono buoys here, so you're pretty much going to always want to be looking for a 50 frequency here and uh yeah i think that's going to conclude this tutorial here combination aztec sona buoy uh yeah so thanks for watching guys and make sure to tune in next time because we'll probably be going over uh, what will we go what will we be going over i think we'll be going over weapons coordinator and weapons control next time yeah and then i think uh we'll do maybe torpedo control after that I'll try to figure. Um, I'll figure that out. I don't think we'll be able to put all three of those in one video, but then we'll save to Toad Array and then TMA for last again, just to make sure I'm properly brushed up on those before I start trying to teach people how to use them. Uh, but yeah, thanks for watching, everyone, and I'll see you guys next time. I'm FPS Chasley. Goodbye for now.